Melton. Here. Rowe. Here. Mr. President. Here. Please rise for the pledge and opening remarks by Council Member Rowe. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may all have a seat. <clears throat> Uh, for my remarks today, I wanted to uh, give a shout out to a local nonprofit group that uh, has become important uh, to me. It's called, but well, was called Omaha Rapid Response. It's called Rapid Response America now, I believe. But their mission is bringing hope to the hopeless by meeting the physical, emotional, and spiritual needs of those suffering in the midst of crisis. It's a group that was started by Ken and Jerry Gruber and a group of volunteers, and they have really an international reach with what they do. That you you were probably familiar with them on the Elkhorn and the Bennington tornadoes. They were some of the first boots on the ground that, that morning after the event with th uh, three or 4,000 volunteers to help start the cleanup. There was a flood in Amy's district sometime after that, and they jumped in to help with the flood and the flood victims. They were in Maui when the fires went through Lahaina. Uh, they, are, they have boots on the ground right now in North and South Carolina as a result of Hurricane Helene. And there'll be boots on the ground as Hurricane Milton takes aim at Tampa. That's a local organization, Omaha Rapid Response. It's a group that we should be proud of and we should support. So if you're handy with a chainsaw or a square tip shovel and you're willing to volunteer, they will get you to these communities that need help. If you're not handy with a chainsaw, <laughs> you can write a check and they'll be happy to take your, your donations and I promise you they will use it well. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. And yes, thoughts, our thoughts and prayers with the people of North Carolina in the aftermath they're dealing with, and then certainly uh, the concern about Tampa, Florida, and uh, Hurricane Milton on the way. Madam Clerk. An affidavit of publication is on file for the pre-council and city council meeting, and a current copy of the Open Meeting Act is posted in a white binder on the east wall of legislative chambers. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Omaha City Council. We appreciate having you here today. We look forward to hearing your testimony on our many items. I encourage you to turn your cell phones off or at least to vibrate. If you have difficulty hearing the proceedings today, you can uh, talk to our tenant here uh, from the building commission on a listening device, or you may also access the screen in the back of the room for closed captioning. Before we get started on our regular agenda today, I wanted to just recognize two groups we have with us here today. We're pleased to host them here at City Hall. Uh, the first one, um, here with Val McPherson is the Young Southeast Asian Leadership Institute. Councilmember Rowe had the pleasure of speaking with them before our meeting, um, and we are happy to have you here at our two o'clock meeting to see how city government operates, and we welcome you to our city, so thank you for being here. <laughs> and the second group we have here is also uh, with the Young Southeast Asian Leadership Group, but it's a fellowship. Uh, these folks have been in Omaha, I think, for several months and have been working at local employers. And so we also thank them and Joyce Cooper, who I think is here hosting them today. Um, and we appreciate your interest in local government, too. <laughs> Madam Clerk. Item six, to consider a Class D&L liquor license for Site 1 Brewing, located at 2566 Farnham Street, Suites 102 and 103. Public hearing and vote on number six is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? I don't see any. Uh, we typically do re require an applicant to be here for a liquor license. Are you, are you here on behalf of this license? Okay, sure. Come on. Yeah, no problem. I thought <laughs> we'll go back and I'll, I'll, because I've already called proponents and opponents, I'm just gonna close public hearing, but now I'll recognize you as the applicant to speak. Yeah, uh, Dave Link with Site One Brewing at uh, 2566 Farnham. Thank you. I'm here to answer any questions we may have? Yes. Great, thank you. Council members, there are no lights. Is there a motion? 
There's a motion and a second to approve. Roll call. Begley. Aye. Harding. Yes. Hug. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. You were very convincing. <laughs> <laughs> I do what I can. Thank you. <laughs> Good luck. Item seven to consider a class I liquor license for Felius Cat Cafe and Rescue located at 5015 Dodge Street, Suite 101. Public hearing and vote on number seven is today. We have the applicant by Zoom. We'll get you off mute here in a second. Okay. Ms. Phelan, try that. I am here. We can hear you. Uh, name and address, please. Hi, Brianna Phelan. Address is 5015 Dodge Street, Suite 101, Felius Cat Cafe. Thank you. And just here to answer questions? Absolutely. All right, thank you. Are there any other proponents in the audience that want to speak? Speaking down. It is also my first time here, so All right. bear with me. Welcome. Um, my name is Callie, and I live right next door. Um, I live at 103 South 50th Avenue. Um, if you stick your arm out right on my porch, you can almost touch their patio. Um, I'm at home with my new baby, and I have my husband, Zach. And, um, and Callie, just your last name for the record, too? Schwinky. Okay, thank you. We've experienced um, a lot bringing my baby home uh, into our first home. Um, a couple of the issues that we've faced have been um, parking in front of our driveway, parking in front of our house. Um, it's been loud now that this business is functioning. Um, they had uh, not Felius in general, but um, I, I just want to ask you too: Are you a proponent or an I am opponent? an opponent. Okay, we're talk uh, I'm still calling for proponents at the moment. Okay, so I am so stay, sorry. Stay close by. You're doing I fine. I will pop a squat right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll pop a squat. And we'll go far. Were there any other proponents that wanted to speak? Okay, I don't think there were. So opponents now, and I we have your information. for so this. Just a great learning lesson for yeah, me you're, here. You're doing fine. <laughs> um, sorry, I, 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 I'm very emotional about this because we're facing so many issues with this business next door. Um, I don't feel the need for liquor to be approved in this building. Um, again, the reason why is because there's no other liquor license approved, um, to my knowledge, on this side of Dodge, which would be South Street, all the way up to 72nd. Um, I know on the north side of Dodge, you know, we have Goldbergs. Um, we have bars that we fully support and love. Um, but for me, this hits home. This is, this is literally right next to my house. Um, there's nothing blocking the noise. There's nothing blocking out anything to protect me and my family from um, the issues we're already facing with multiple business being active. And I just don't see how liquor, um, the, the especially a class one liquor license, I'm not super sh sure on my research, but um, it's the approval of basically all the types of liquor. Um, it doesn't matter what the type of liquor it is. It can be hard liquor even. And I just don't see why this would be needed at a, at a cat rescue. And, and specifically when it's right next door to my home, it just really hits its home for me. Thank you. We'll see if there's questions. I think there will be. Any other opponents that want to speak today? Yep. Hi, my name is Mike Shanley, 108 South 50th Avenue. My wife Megan is here with me as well. I'm Callie's neighbor. I live across the street. Hi, Bree. Thank you for your note this morning. Um, so look, I think there's, there's a commercial location at the corner of our street, and that is what it is. There's going to be parking problems when there's a business there, et cetera. The entryway and patio for Phileas Cafe is on 50th Avenue and not Dodge. Uh, they do not have an entry on Dodge. Uh, the entry to their business is on our street. There is no meaningful barrier between the cafe and Callie's house. Uh, and I think from a zoning and planning perspective, that seems a bit um, confusing. So I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that. Thank you. Any other opponents today? Seeing none, we'll close public hearing. Mr. Bagel, you're recognized. Thank you. Mr. President, uh, Bree, can you hear me? Good afternoon. A few questions. I can hear you. You can hear me okay? Yes, I can. Can okay. you hear me? I can. So Sorry. I appreciate that you had a meeting with some neighbors last night. And I 
forward you some emails that I got from a few of the folks that are here today, which mm -hmm. I appreciate you coming down and taking your time on a Tuesday afternoon. So I'm gonna walk through some questions that we'll try to Absolutely. flush out just to make sure we're on the same page. Um, Sounds good. So what, tell me about the outreach that you did for this to the neighborhood. Yeah, so this is our first time too applying for a liquor license. So we followed all of the current rules and requirements for the application process. Uh, Hindsight being 2020, I, you know, after talking with a few of the neighbors uh, in the block, I think they would have probably appreciated a heads up and we totally take responsibility for that. Completely understand. We have already chatted with the president of the neighborhood association, as well as the past president of the neighborhood association, have them into our space, really show them what we're trying to do, which is not create a loud, rucorous bar environment. We're simply offering cans of wine and beer in a very limited quantity to guests. Uh, so again, outreach efforts, we've made ourselves completely available to any questions or concerns that have come out of this and try to respond to all of those concerns point by point and really make sure that, you know, if, if people do have more concerns that come up, we're happy to answer them. I do want to clarify though, that we are not leasing the patio space that belongs to another tenant entirely. And our liquor license would only be for use indoors uh, on the opposite side of the lower level. So I do just wanna call that out because I know noise is absolutely top of mind for that neighborhood and we will not be using the patio as it is not our lease space technically. Okay, thanks for clarifying that. I know Kelly had mentioned that. It's right outside your patio. So in the email and some of the correspondences we had, um, you're gonna be serving cans of wine and beer. Are you gonna serve anything else? And that's only well, indoor indoor consumption, correct? Correct, and we have a max of 20 guests at one time, which we have sufficient parking in the lot across the street, which I know is 100% also a concern. And so we've gone above and beyond to ensure that on our website, we're being clear about that. I just made an update today and also made my number available to any community member that feels that, oh, hey, someone's parking where they shouldn't be, which is either blocking their, their driveway or you know doing something that they shouldn't be. I am absolutely happy to address that. But the reality is that we also are operating in Dundee. And again, I can push everybody to park in that lot. I can't control where everybody parks. But again, I wanna be a really good neighbor and make sure that if issues are coming up, I can address it individually with whoever is parking in that space. I also wanna be clear that parking is for the entire building. We are one small tenant in that building. And so larger parking concerns should probably be also addressed with the building owner who obviously it would be a separate conversation altogether. I'm glad you brought that. That was one of the things I was gonna ask you in respect to if this business gets going and it opens, how will you communicate that to Callie and others that are in the neighborhood? I think that is important that they have contact information because as a new mom or a new family or anybody in the neighborhood, 100%. if people are blocking driveways I think by you communicating that, hey, I am available, and if it's somebody within the 20 or 25, whatever it is, that are in your establishment, do you pledge here that you will make your contact information to work with neighbors if something arises out of the blue that you can, you can at least rectify it with somebody that's, that's in there? I absolutely pledge that, and I also, have open lines of communication, like I said, with the current um, Neighborhood Association uh, President, Molly, and uh, giving out my direct cell phone number if there's an emergent issue. Um, and then obviously I'm here anytime anyone wants to stop in and chat or has something they wanna bring up, I am completely available. Okay, and I, again, I appreciate the correspondence we had that you did reach out that I connected you to and you had, can you tell us briefly about your meeting that you had last night? Yeah, so we had uh, three uh, neighborhood members, uh, BJ, who is one of the uh, prior presidents of the Neighborhood Association, and uh, I believe it was uh, two of his family members who live on the block, came in. We had an amazing chat for an hour. I talked them through our business model, which is basically an open concept 
cat shelter and rescue uh, that really facilitates connections between the community and providing shelter cats with a really amazing experience outside of cages. We've operated downtown for the last six years, and one of the biggest requests that we got from guests was, hey, I'd love to just enjoy a beer or wine with this experience. And so with keeping in mind the fact that, yes, we want to keep Dundee's neighborhood special. I love Dundee. Our intention here is not to create a ruckus or to, like I said, open a late night bar scene. Our hours during the week, we close at 7. The latest we're open on the weekdays is 10 p.m. or weekends is 10 p.m. Uh, so we're trying to be very, very conscious of that and keeping the alcohol consumption inside and limited to cans of wine and beer, as well as training all our staff on serve safe. I feel that we've gone above and beyond to address that. And I walk them through all of those aspects. And, you know, we were able to come to a really good understanding. I let them know I'm here if there's any questions that they have. And I personally left that meeting on a positive note and feeling that, you know, hey, I have an open line of communication with Molly and BJ to the neighborhood as a whole, and they hopefully felt the exact same way about me. Okay, and what are the hours of operation you're gonna have? Yeah, we are closed on Mondays. Uh, on Tuesday through Thursday, we are open from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. And then on Friday and Saturday nights, we are open at 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. Okay, Bree, thank you. I might have a few more questions for you after Absolutely. I ask the planning director. Uh, Mr. Fanslow, a couple, maybe one question for you. Eric England, planning department. Oh, sorry, Eric. That's okay. Good afternoon. Oh. Um, is there are some concerns with the neighbors as they're trying to understand this process. Is there any zoning or planning issues that you see with this from your perspective? Uh, no, the subject property has office zoning, so it's GO. Um, is the base zoning district with the ACI overlay uh, directly to the south, which is, um, you know, Callie who spoke, that begins R3 zoning, which is acceptable. Um, typically, there's buffer yard requirements when you separate office and commercial uses with residential uses. However, this is an existing site, so it's probably non-conforming, uh, but a change of use or tenant does not kick in any re new requirements to install a buffer yard. Okay, thanks, Mr. England. Yep. Uh, one other comment for Callie and Michael. You don't have to come down unless you would like to, but I tried to address some of the concerns you had. I know it's a new process for neighbors. Anytime we get liquor applications, they come to the council, and, and the, we certainly want communication with the neighbors, which I think has been done through emails or the meeting that the, Ms. Phelan had last night. I wanted to make clear, just so you understand, in respect to the liquor application, she put on record what the hours of it are going to be. So it's not till 2 a.m. It's till 10 a.m. on the week on Friday. I guess let's see on Friday and Saturday night. Is that correct, Ms. Phelan? And the liquor license, we're just a recommending body. We could vote 7-0 to approve it or 7-0 to deny it, but it goes to Lincoln, and I, I can't speak for the liquor commission who is the ultimate authority, but I would suspect that this is probably an easy one for them because the communication's been done. Um, there's been no past issues that we know about with the, these folks. And I wanted to stress that Ms. Phelan in a public meeting today said she will make herself available. Um, Callie, with respect to people blocking her driveway, I can certainly be sensitive enough to a, a new family and a new mom with a new baby. It's something new going right outside your back door, but they're not going to be on the patio. They'll have communication and contact information. And you have my email. And if there's any issues, you can certainly let me know. I'm going to support this today because I, I feel confident enough in this business that Ms. Phelan put herself out there to communicate. And if there's issues, I'll be glad to try to rectify anything that comes up. But again, we're a recommending body for the liquor application. So that's why I'm gonna support it today. Thanks, Mr. President. Thank you. Ms. Johnson, you're recognized. Thank you. Um, Brianna, um, how, are you, how are you today? Um, I'm a little Hi. bit, 
Good. I'm a little bit um, concerned and confused about your level of engagement in the area, particularly with the neighborhood. Um, did I hear you initially say that there was no engagement or did you just have engagement last night? I'm, I'm confused. So this, as I said, is a brand new process for us too. So I followed all of the rules and there was a notice, I guess. We had to submit all the addresses. They sent out the notice. I thought that was the formal communication. So again, I do apologize if I missed a step there. I feel like I have gone above and beyond in the last few days to rectify that and make myself completely available to anyone that had questions or concerns. As I said, our intent was not to not let people know that this was happening. We had a public display on our door. Um, and while I completely understand concerns, I have feel that we have gone above and beyond to at least rectify some of the concerns that weren't related to our business operations and at least let people know like, hey, we're not renting this area of the building. We're really only renting this indoor space and it's gonna be very limited. And I do feel like we've made really great connections and inroads with the Neighborhood Association, which represents the neighborhood as a whole. So that is where we are standing now. The meeting that we had, it was actually on Monday night, or yeah, it was on uh, Monday night, last night already, uh, was open to anyone in the community that wanted to stop in, meet us, see our space. Uh, it was open from four to six, and we received a few people that came in, and I've also made myself available via phone and email as well. All right, now, did you also say that you have a business somewhere else? No, we actually were operating uh, Felia's Cat Cafe downtown for the last six years on 24th and Harney. This is our new location. So we closed those doors back in March. So you, you, you are a previous business owner, correct? Correct. Okay, so business owners usually engage with their neighborhoods just for purposes of clear lines of communication so that the conversation regarding what you're proposing today would have already been done before it came to city council. Most businesses operate like that, just a common courtesy. It's not, it's kind of basic 101 business model in terms of how you connect to some area in which you're gonna open your doors simply because you're going to want to have that that buy-in from that community things like that I, I i just find it odd as a previous business owner that you would have uh, missed that opportunity to engage those folks uh, with your new especially if you want it to be successful yeah, I am also a member of the Merchants Association of Dundee as well. I recently joined that. Like I said, this did not come out of ill intent or anything of that nature. Um, I am a very open person. I, I already sincerely apologized to the neighbors on the block if I did miss that step. As you know, as a previous business owner, opening your doors is a crazy time on top of you know operating the nonprofit side of things. Uh, again, if I could go back and do it over, yes, would I maybe go door to door? Absolutely. But as I said, I think I've done above and beyond to try and rectify that and make myself available. Thank you for explaining that. Um, I would feel a lot more comfortable if you would make a commitment to go door to door at this point and let people Absolutely. know what you're doing Absolutely. there. Thank you. A hundred percent. I actually already uh, reached out to another tenant in the space today and said you know hey i really do feel like we missed a step on this and we are actually working on putting together a little door-to-door -door kit for everyone on the block so i hear you i appreciate the feedback it's a learning experience and i'm excited to hopefully move forward and really prove that we're here to be a partner in the community we're not trying to you know make anything harder for anyone on the block. I love Dundee, there, that's the whole reason we opened a space here. I've lived here before in this community. Mm -hmm. So again, I think it just comes down to, it was a miscommunication and I am here for anyone that needs it. But I will absolutely make that commitment to go door to door, 100%. Thank you. Of Thank you. course. Thank you, Ms. Melton, you're recognized. 
Thank you. <clears throat> I, I'm not requesting that you go door to door. The only door I'm requesting that you go knock on is Callie's door. Okay, because absolutely, Callie and her husband have a little baby, and they literally are living right next door to you. So, um, you two need to exchange cell numbers and Number and have nice. all that because I understand <laughs> Callie's the absolute concern. Um, and I, I, it took a lot. I don't know where she went, or I can't see her because she's behind the podium. Oh, there you are. Um, I want to thank you for for coming down and and taking that step because this is where you live. This is where you're going to raise your family. And I understand that. It sounds like this is not, and I'd be more concerned, Callie, if this was a bar. And by the way, just a regular bar could go in right here <clears throat> because it's zoned that way. And and the and Councilman Begley's right. Even if we sent it down to the Liquor Commission on a 7-0 vote, not recommending and denying, um, our lawyer would not have any legitimate defense for our denial. Uh, for purposes of state law and what's required. So um, I, I want to let you know that I'm extremely sensitive to your concerns, and I'm sounding, it sounds like Bree's going to make a commitment to reach out to you um, so that you're in communication. And then it, you have, Brianna, you have run another business, and I, I, to my knowledge, I don't know that anybody ever received any complaints before. I know you didn't have liquor before, but here you're just serving beer and alcohol to the people that actually are bringing their cats in for play. So this isn't like meet up at the bar and let's go to the cat cafe. Sorry. Okay. That's not, it's actually, we have rescue cats that people can adopt here. They don't bring their animals in, but correct. And Callie, uh, to address that, I completely also am sensitive to, you're a new mom. I totally get that, which is why I did not want to have alcohol outside. I think the houses are too close for that. And this is not something where we're gonna let guests come in and get rowdy. Our mission is to serve the animals. This is just another way for people to come in, connect, relax. And that's something that our organization and my board take very seriously. We have in-depth uh, documentation and uh, policy around alcohol serving and all of my staff are going through serve safe training as well. And I invite you to stop by any time. I'd love to show you our space. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm always available. And Kelly, let's definitely set a time to meet up and, and chat in person. Okay. All right. Thank you. I just wanted to put that on there. 100%. Thank you, Mr. Bagley. One other quick point. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Bree, just for the record, I actually was first notified of this from Senator John Kavanaugh was out door knocking for his campaign, and he was up in Dundee, and he texted me. He said, hey, do you know anything about this liquor license? And I, I looked. It didn't sound familiar to me, but in looking into it when he sent me that last week, I talked to staff, and I guess there was a human error that Council President Fesserson's district is on the north side of Dodge. Mine is on the south side. So I think there maybe was a little miscommunication to me i saw it on the agenda on thursday so i called you and emailed you and you called me right back so my expectation with you here today is going forward brie that if anything comes up i know where to get a hold of you and i and based on our conversation that we had and you meeting with the neighborhood people how you did and again yesterday was it done 100 percent perfect maybe not but your pledge here today, I, I'm taking you at your word for the neighbors that you'll make yourself available, and that's why I'm supporting this today. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, was there a motion? Second. Motion or second to approve. Roll call. Begley. Aye. Harding. Yes. Hug. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. Thank you for your testimony. Item 8, to consider a Class IK liquor license for popcorn and cocktails located at 1118 Howard Street. Public hearing and vote on number 8 is today. Proponents, please. Hi, Angela Poor, 118 Howard Street, popcorn and cocktails. Thank you. Any other proponents today? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearing is closed. There's a motion to approve in a second. No further lights. Roll call. Begley, Aye. Harding, yes. Hug, yes. Johnson, yes. Melton, yes. Rowe, yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. Thank you so Thanks. much. You bet. Good luck. 
Items 9 through 13 can be considered together for MCC Elkhorn Campus, located northeast of 204th Street and West Dodge Road. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Item 9, an ordinance to rezone this property from AG District, R5 District, and R6 District to R5 District. Item 10, an ordinance to amend the boundaries of the ACI Overlay District to incorporate this property into that district. Items 11 and 12 are resolutions to approve the preliminary plat and final plat. Item 13, a resolution to approve the subdivision agreement. Public hearing and vote on items 9 through 13 are today. Proponents, please. Hello, my name is Terry Morrison. I'm with Earhart Griffin and Associates. Uh, we're the civil engineer for Metropolitan Community College. I'm here to answer any questions. We also have representatives um, from the college if you have questions for them. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Any other proponents? Uh, Don R. Johnson, the Johnson Equestrian Foundation, and Northam Hall Concerned Citizen Foundation, Kanishua Niha So ID Thailand, Namaste Nepal, Kalenge. We're going to work on some trades since we have so many students here. Some like them. These were trades. Are there any other proponents to items nine through thirteen? <coughs> Seeing none. Any opponents? Public hearings closed. There's a motion and a second to approve. Roll call. Begley. Aye. Harding. Yes. Hug. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed Thanks. seven to zero. Item 14, a resolution to approve the amendment to the NODO tax increment financing redevelopment project plan for the site located southeast of Nicholas and 12th Streets in an amount up to $2,616,662. Public hearing and vote on number 14 is today. Proponents, please. Uh, yeah, good afternoon, Don Seaton, Omaha City Planning Department. Uh, you may recall approving this large mixed-use development project in the Millwork Common District back in February. Uh, the amendment before you today doesn't change the physical aspects of the project. It remains a large five-story building uh, with 12,000 square feet of first floor commercial uses and four stories of apartments above. What it does is it increases the uh, TIF support, tax increment financing, from a little more than 1.9 million to $2,616,662. Uh, this project had been reviewed by the TIF committee and has been approved by the TIF committee. I would note they'll also be in front of you in the uh, coming weeks with a request for EEA funding. Uh, the project meets the requirements of the TIF program, <clears throat> will have a large impact on the area. We ask for your approval. Thank you. Other proponents? Good afternoon, Arun Agarwal, 10404 Essex Court, Omaha, Nebraska, 68114. Just here to answer any questions. Thank you. Any other proponents in the audience? Seeing none, any opponents? <coughs> Larry Store, 5015 Lafayette Avenue, <coughs> Omaha, 68132. This is an opportunity for the young people to see some transparency in this body. First of all, I don't think Donnie signed in to speak. I did, because I was required to on this item. Uh, but I am usually against tax increment financing. These young people might be interested in taking this idea back to their home countries, because it's a way to build Larry. new things. And uh, I think we could explain to them stay what on, it is, stay on topic. how it works. I'm against it because of the way it works. First of all, I look at that area I don't see a lot of businesses down there. So I want to read the statement here before you call me out of order and interrupt me. Uh, I'd like to understand uh, how the builder, and who's often a developer and a real estate company, actually pays for this. It implies that the city's participation is a loan uh, I didn't know the city had that much money to loan. So maybe there's a bond behind it. I don't know. <clears throat> but 
but it's to offset expenses that a construction company, developer, or a real estate company would have. Gee whiz, why shouldn't I go for that? They should understand that it wouldn't get built without TIF. That's why it's not there already. Because builders are waiting for a free ride. Explain to them how the builder will pay off that over 20 years or 15 years and why he's going to pay it off over that long anyway. Why shouldn't the builder pay if he's not going to own the business and stay there? Why shouldn't he be paying all along? And then also, what are these ad valorem taxes? If there's no other businesses down there, except the business that'll be in that multi-use facility, how's that gonna pay off all the expenses of building it? It just needs to, maybe a chart, comic diagram, explaining how that uh, flows and does not raise my property tax, would benefit everybody, particularly young people going back with American ideas to their countries. Thank you. Thank you. Any other opponents? Seeing none, public hearings closed. Ms. Johnson, you're recognized. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Um, if you wouldn't mind coming up. Of course. Um, thank you, and how are you today? I'm good, Arun. Good. <laughs> I'm a good, I'm a big proponent on education. And when we have a community in which I serve, um, the average income is $20,000. In order for that community to be uplifted, education has to be one component that has to be done. Otherwise, um, that community will continue to exist with poverty there. So with that being said, um, we have a gentleman that has asked three questions. Um, one of them was, how will the builder pay for this? The second one was, he needed an explanation for the city's contribution. Um, and the third one, I'm, I didn't write that down, um, so I'm gonna need clarification on that. And if we could get those questions answered, and then I have a question myself, um, since we are gonna be using community development um, law here. Of course, I appreciate the question. Uh, is it Mr. Storer? Um, I, I think on the agenda, there is a hyperlink that goes to the application. So, I mean, the process is fairly detailed, as we know. <laughs> um, so it does articulate what we call the sources and uses of funds when making said application. The city in no way is contributing any dollars. What the city is doing is future property taxes. So the ad valorem taxes that were referred are the property taxes, the incremental or the increase in property taxes for the same property that would it will exist post completion of this, proper, of this property. So those incremental taxes for a period of 15 years in this project's case is going back to into the project to make it happen. Of course, the longevity of this project is expected to last much greater than that. So it is accretive to the city, not to mention the first floor of this project includes all commercial anticipated to generate a vast amount of sales tax, uh, which also contributes both to the local state uh, governments. So uh, ultimately, the projects, you know, pays the bills through rental and it's funded privately and it's entirely through a combination of debt and equity. Thank you, and is this not a extremely blighted area designation? It, it is. So so would that not be a 20 year for <laughs> good, good, Good question, <laughs> Councilwoman. We are contributing five years back uh, to uh, the benefit of the city um, for the streetcar. I think that's something worth shouting about. Uh, and, and shouting and, it and, as loud as I possibly can. And our constituents about <laughs> Of course, no, and, and we're pleased to do so. I mean, this is th this is a modern uh, multifamily project, so we have not, the city is anticipated to build a parking structure adjacent. We're not in contributing. In light of the streetcar, we're actually enhancing the usability of the entire site. So we're certainly augmenting, um, we're certainly augmenting 
the utilization of the property and we're aligned with the city's interest with what the streetcar should bring which is why we haven't necessarily included um, parking that's attached to this particular development which is not something that we would have done um, without that thank you and do we have a robust plan to engage and hire subcontractors I, I, that's in our normal course of practice so uh, absolutely we have an open bid process we're certainly aligned you know the education that you just talked about with Metro Community College we're actively in, involved with the college uh, on a number of voluntary and active measures so uh, that's in our normal course of practice so I don't expect that to change with this project okay and last but not least um, what would be the minimum cost if I were to uh, rent uh, uh, an apartment there yeah, so that's, you know, in this market, it's fairly dynamic, um, but I would expect in the eight $900 a month is probably on the on the low side for a studio unit, but I think uh, I do reserve, that that's a, that's a fairly dynamic uh, issue today, um, and that's certainly based on supply and demand. Thank you. Of course. Thank you, Mr. Rowe, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I just have room. I just have a couple of questions, pretty easy ones, just to talk about. Um, today, that's just a vacant land, or is it a teardown building? Or Yeah, we there was uh, Lakeside Recycling was there previously, okay. so we've already uh, demolished the structure. Okay. So right now, there's nobody working there. It's just a vacant piece of ground. Yeah, and I would probably add there's some environmental issues that we're working through as well. Okay. As part of the I guess my question is... Um, the amount of jobs you did, I'm sure with that amount of commercial space on the first floor, that's going to generate numerous jobs. Do you have any idea what kind of economic impact that will have? How many, how many jobs that will be? About 35, 35 full-time jobs, um, okay. and that doesn't include the indirect, direct associated with the construction. Okay. So, and then const you all have construction jobs there as well, framers, Absolutely. trim carpenters, drywallers. Absolutely. Electricians, you'll have a lot of economic development yeah and I would I would add that I mean this the profile of a, of a resident here I mean we're talking about North downtown Makerhood um, Millwork district so these are um, these are professional makers in a lot of ways right so they're working from home we certainly have a, a new hybrid uh, economy and you know the units are designed to allow that and facilitate that so I, I'd certainly remind everybody that it's somebody's home now is also their work environment in a lot of cases so I'd, I'd certainly add that as well perfect well I appreciate your willing to take willingness to take the risk and to uh, build the project I think it'll be a great <laughs> addition to the city well I appreciate your support thank you there are no for the lights is there a motion so the motion and a second to approve roll call Bagley Aye. Harding yes. Pug yes. Johnson yes. Melton yes. Rowe yes. mr. president yes Motion passed seven to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Consent Thank agenda. You. Any member of the city council may cause any item placed on the consent agenda to be removed. Items removed from the consent agenda shall be taken up by the city council immediately following the consent agenda in the order in which they were removed unless otherwise provided by the city council rules of order. There's been a request to remove item number 22 from the consent agenda for potential amendment. So first we'll take Items 15 through 21, and those public hearings were already held on October 1st. I don't see any further lights. Is there a motion? Second. There's a motion, a second to approve items 15 through 21. Roll call. Bagley. Aye. Harding. Yes. Hug. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed 7 to 0. Item 22, an ordinance to amend Omaha Municipal Code, Chapter 3, Article 1, entitled In General, by creating sections 3-12 and 3-13 to require any person or business operating or housing a functioning crypto automated teller machine or Bitcoin teller machine on its premises to post a written warning of potential fraud risk. Ms. Melton, do you want to address your amendment? Uh, yes, I, um, after last week, 15 days um, is probably too short. I'm asking to change it that this ordinance will take effect 60 days from passage. That'll give time to provide um, some notice to businesses um, uh, and get it out there. So just to give us 60 days to kind of educate some of the owners of these cryptocurrency, or I guess who have their cryptocurrency machines in their businesses. So 
um, I would like to make a motion to amend it from 15 days to 60 days. And you all have the amendment in front of you. Okay, thank you. There's a motion and a second. No further lights. Roll call. Bagley, Aye. Harding, yes. Hug, yes. Johnson, yes. Melton, yes. Rowe. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. Motion to approve as amended. Second. Roll call. Bagley, Aye. Harding, yes. Hug, yes. Johnson, yes. Melton, yes. Rowe. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. The public hearings on agenda items 23 through 34 are today. If you wish to address the city council regarding these items, please come to the microphone, indicate the agenda item number you wish to address, identify yourself by name, address, and who you represent, and if you are a proponent or an opponent, these are items 23 through 34. Good afternoon, Deb Sander, City Human Resources Director, I'm here on item number 34 as a proponent and here to answer any questions. Good afternoon, Rebecca Nunley, uh, City of Omaha Human Resources Department, I'm here to answer any questions for item number 34. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't see any other testifiers. Mr. Bagley, you're recognized. Thank you. President, Mr. Rouser, a couple questions, please. Austin Rouser, Public Works. Austin, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, we had a discussion in our pre-council meeting today. So there's seven of these on the agenda um, for these agreements. Prior to this year, it was, was it five, is that correct? Five. yes. And why are we going to seven? Kind of walk us through the reason for that again. Yeah, so, <clears throat> excuse me. So each year we, um, uh, we try to expand how many people we have helping us out. We've been, we've had kind of a shortfall at the ins inspection role within snowstorms. These are the inspectors that watch the residential snow contractors to make sure they're adhering to our contract plans, specifications, requirements, contract documents, so forth. Okay. So they, um, they will follow the contractors to the area. If there's any deficiencies with the way that the snow was removed by the contractor, they call them back. Now key to that operation, is to make sure that the inspector can get out in a very timely manner behind that contractor to make sure that they're still relatively close if there are issues that need to be addressed. For instance, if there's piles that get put over mailboxes, fire hydrants, those kinds of things, uh, we can get the contractor back relatively quickly. And so each year we reach out to the consultant community, we try to find more people to come on board and help with this because we, we are relatively short staff, have been short staffed in this for, you know, this is a program we've done for about 15 years now. So um, uh, we've been, we were fortunate this year to have Jacobs and SEH, which were two additional firms in town that expressed interest. Uh, so we'll, we'll bring them on board for the winter and uh, hopefully shorten that time frame between when a contractor finishes an area and when an inspection is done. Okay, and how will this work now if this is approved that there are seven, do you shorten, I'm assuming, the areas that they cover? And that'll make it more efficient if complaints come in and then those complaints get routed out to the contractors or city crews or who, is it just contractors? Yeah. They would go back and clear up the, where right. the complaints come from? Right, yeah, they have to cover less ground. Obviously more people is, is shorter time frames. They, they can cover less ground so we can get through faster. Okay, and it was mentioned, I, one of my colleagues mentioned this morning, a, a good point, just can you confirm it, that it's a, to pay a fee for each of these seven, not to exceed $60,000, so if we have a warm winter and the roads yeah. don't have a lot of snow in them, then we're not paying 60000 each of these seven? That's correct. It's, it's, it's an hourly rate that we pay them, and it's, it's not to exceed 60000 per contract. Okay, one last question. So was there ever city crews that were doing this before in the past? We, we have. We've supplemented some of this work with, city, with our construction inspectors. Now, th those, those inspectors in the construction division, they get assigned to different roles within the operation. Some of that is inspection, some of it's plowing. So what this actually does for us is, is if we get the numbers in where we, we can actually pull some of those people off of this assignment, move them to where they can go and snow plow alleys, clear alleys, bridges, sidewalks, those kinds of things, um, that's, that's going to help us more efficiently process the entire operation. Okay, and this isn't putting any full-time city employees out of a job? No, there, there are no jobs or risk here that are city jobs. Okay, so. thanks Austin. Thank you. The public hearings are closed. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. 
Is a motion a second to approve these items? Roll call. Bagley. Aye. Harding. Yes. Hug. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. Item 35, an ordinance to approve an interlocal agreement with the Papio Missouri River NRD and Allegiant Health for the Sorensen Trail Gerard connection. A vote on item number 35 is today. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Roll call. Bagley. Aye. Harding. Yes. Hug. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Mr. President. Abstain. Motion passed six to zero. Festerson abstains. Item 36, an ordinance to acquire private property for the Coal Creek Culvert at Military Avenue Project. The public hearing on number 36 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 37, an ordinance to approve a sanitary sewer maintenance agreement for the Square Apartment site at 3001 Leavenworth Street. The public hearing on number 37 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 38, an ordinance to approve a roof drain curb outlet maintenance agreement for the site at 807 South 50th Street. The public hearing on number 38 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 39, an ordinance to approve an interlocal agreement with the City of Council Bluffs to extend Omaha's electric scooter program. The public hearing on number 39 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 40, an ordinance to approve a non-exclusive public road license agreement with CenturyLink for a period of 10 years. Public hearing on number 40 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 41, an ordinance to approve a non-exclusive public road license agreement with Northern Natural Gas Company for a period of 10 years. Public hearing on number 41 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 42, an ordinance to approve a major amendment to a mixed-use district development agreement for Copperfields, located northeast of 204th and F Streets, Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Public hearing on number 42 is today. Proponents, please. Good afternoon. Randy Kushak with Lamper Nearson, 14710 West Dodge Road, Omaha, Nebraska, here to answer any questions you may have today. Thank you. Any other proponents? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Thank you. No. Item 43, an ordinance to transfer lot to Stone, Stony Brook South, replat four to Sanitary Improvement District number 111. Public hearing on number 43 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 44, an ordinance to accept and authorize disbursement from the fiscal year 2023 Safer Grant Award. Public hearing on number 44 is today. Proponents, please. Joe Salcedo, Omaha Fire, here for you if you have any questions. Thank you. <clears throat> Mike Francis, Public Safety Grant Coordinator for the Fire Department, here to answer any questions. Thank you. Trevor Towie, 6005 Grover Street, Omaha Professional Firefighters. Um, just You've heard me talk about this, so I wanted to take another opportunity to uh, uh, express my appreciation to FEMA uh, for considering us worthy of this award. It's uh, going to be very helpful. Uh, you've heard me say before how understaffed we were, so I appreciate the administration uh, recognizing that and taking a step to get the money to do that. Um, this is going to allow for 18 more firefighters to be downtown, reinstate Engine 2, and it's going to be a big help. But also, I wanted to quickly thank you guys because throughout the discussion, um, every one of you committed in their own way uh, to addressing those staffing needs. And so we're fortunate that we got the SAFER grant to do that, but I want to thank all of you personally and publicly uh, for your commitment to find a way to address those and uh, also here for questions. Thank you. Thank you. Any other proponents? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearings closed. I would just add, um, I appreciate the testimony today and our public safety committee meeting 
this morning we did talk with uh, Chief Bossman about this, and I think we're all also very pleased the grant came through, uh, and we'll fund the 18 firefighters for the next three years. And the progression of events we talked about this morning was um, starting a, a lateral class of five or six recruits they believe here shortly, a larger class, uh, November 12th, of about 37 or 38 new firefighters, and then with this grant being accepted, um, I guess in two weeks, which I'll look forward to supporting, that would fund the extra 18 firefighters we've been talking about, March of 2025, probably in service by April or May, so therefore hitting the 687 staffing goal we've all been supportive of in the budget uh, by next summer. So we look forward to doing that, and um, I'm also pleased the grant did come through. No further lights, Ms. Madam Clerk. Non-action items, the items 45 through 65, do not require public hearing or city council consideration at this meeting, but will be placed on a future agenda for public hearing and or vote. The reason for non-action is noted after the item on the agenda, as well as the date the item is expected to appear on agenda for consideration. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Motion and second to adjourn. Roll call. Bagley. Aye. Harding. Yes. Hug. Yes. Two lines. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Rowe. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Meeting is adjourned at two fifty six.